Hey, let me ask you three questions. Number one, have you ever been in a place where your confidence was tested? Number two, have you ever been in a place where your endurance was tested? And number three, in those situations, did the thought of shrinking back ever enter into your mind? Well, 2020 has certainly been a year like no other, and if you're like me, maybe your faith confidence was tested, or maybe your faith endurance was tested. The good news is that the Bible doesn't leave us without a testimony or a witness of what to do in those situations. Hebrews 10, 35 through 11 and 1 says this, Therefore do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. For yet in a very little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. But my righteous ones will live by faith. And if they shrink back, my soul has no pleasure in them. But we are not of those who shrink back to destruction, but those who have faith to the preserving of the soul. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. In this short devotional on constructing faith, point one is this, the circumstance is only the context. You contain the choice. I mentioned earlier that I'm a doctor and I just received in October of 2020 my doctorate. I passed the defense and I scored amazing on the dissertation. But my doctorate is in global leadership and perspectives. And one leadership paradigm I came across was that of conscious leadership. And in summation, this is what it says. Most people or leaders view life in one or two ways. The first way is that life is happening by them the second way is life is happening to them. The by them people are open and responsive in circumstances. To them people are closed and resistant in circumstances. The determining factor between the two people is this. Where do they place the option of choice? By them leaders are open and responsive in circumstances because regardless of the circumstance, the choice of what to do next is determined by them. To them leaders or people are closed in resistance because the circumstance is happening to them. Therefore, the choice is out of their control. Verse 35 that we just read says this, therefore do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward. What it means is this, the choice to throw away or to be tethered in our faith is determined by you and by me and not by the circumstance. So point number one, the circumstance is only the context. You contain the choice. Point number two is this, endure for the promise of God, not for the problem to end. Let me say that one more time. Endure for the promise of God, not for the problem to end. Verse 36 says this, for you have need of endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. Yes, there will be problems that we cannot control. There will be problems that we face that we don't wanna face. But the point is this, even though we want the problem or the circumstance to end, the question that we have to answer is what is sustaining us in the progress towards the end. The word endurance here in the orig original language means this, the capacity to continue to bear up under difficult circumstances. Viktor Frankl, who was a Jewish Austrian neurologist and psychiatrist is uh, famously known as being one of the Holocaust survivors. And then he came up with a therapy uh, known as logotherapy, which is a meaning and being based therapy to help people through difficult situations. And this is one of my favorite quotes by him. He says this, life is never made unbearable by circumstances, but only by the lack of meaning and purpose. Let me say that one more time. Life is never made unbearable by circumstances, but only by lack of meaning and purpose. 
As a Christian, our meaning and purpose is not defined by the circumstance, but by Christ. We may run into some hard times, some difficult seasons, some problems will come and go, but our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Therefore, His promises are sure and become our source of endurance. But we are not of those who shrink back, Hebrews says, to destruction, but those who have faith to the preserving of the soul. Verse 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, which leads me to my final point, point number three. Faith is not blind, faith is built. While this verse does not give us the full definition of faith, it does provide us an understanding of an aspect of faith. And that aspect, aspect is this. In this instance, faith determines how we perceive reality. Dr. Shane Lopez, who is one of the leading researchers on hope, from a psychological perspective, defines hope as this, or it says there's four core characteristics and beliefs people of hope have. Number one is the future will be better than the present. Number two is I have the power to make it so. Number three is there are many paths to my goals. And number four, none of those paths are free of obstacles. As a Christian, I would add one more thing and say this. We don't start at hope. We start at faith because faith is the substance of things hoped for. The word substance here means substructure. The substructure has to be built on a foundation. What is that foundation? Hebrews 12, 2 tells us what that foundation is, and it's this. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. The perception of reality that faith provides gives the basic motivation to endure trials and tribulations. Here's one thing that I can tell you. Because faith is the substructure of things hoped for, the construction of faith is not built on our ability to do something, it's built on what Jesus has already done. Therefore, He is the foundation. He is the author and the perfecter. Those two words means that He is the founder, the CEO, and He will never, ever leave what He has built. As you continue to go through this year, and even the years to come, I hope that this understanding of the construction of faith will continue to lead and guide you through the good times, through the hard times, because Jesus is the same all the times. Bless you, may the Lord be with you.